Why, hello friends, Jen Foxbot here. Our first math myth is you can't take the square root of a negative number. <gasps> oh no! So what if you're solving a problem and you're so diligent and you do it all right, you use the quadratic formula and you get <gasps> negative 16. No, what do you do? You throw down your pencil and you storm out of the math classroom and you say, never again. That's okay. Mathematicians as far back as the 1700s were grappling with this problem. They kept running into these pesky negative square roots and they realized, wait a second, our number system is incomplete. We are missing a number. And so they defined i to be the square root of negative one. Boom. Unfortunately, the mathematicians way back then were a little confused and they decided to call them imaginary numbers, which gets very confusing. So they're not imaginary in the sense that unicorns and fairies are imaginary, which only in this realm or whatever only exist in our heads. Imaginary numbers do exist in the physical real world, as we will see in different examples. Um, but... They're just called imaginary for fun, I suppose. Uh, sometimes we talk about them like complex numbers. So you might see something like Z equals A plus IB. And then you can talk about the imaginary part and the real part. And this is your complex number that has both our standard familiar number line as well as our new, perhaps unfamiliar imaginary number line. But imaginary numbers are tangible numbers and they show up all over in physics and engineering. So don't get confused by the label. And next time that you are at a math test, you can be like, oh, hey, I know the answer to negative square root 16. It is just 4i. Boom. QED, as they say. Math myth busted. All right. Keep sending me your math myths and let's tackle them together. See you next time. Bye.